everyone, it, we're back for maybe the last time on Blood Bowl 2. I am Stevie126, also known as The Scientist, and today I am joined by Robbie. Say hello, Robbie. Hello, Robbie. Hey. How you doing, mate? Yeah, doing well, doing well. Nice to be back. It's been a while. It has been a hot minute. Uh, I actually don't know uh, how long it's been, but we will look that up later. So... As our dozens of viewers, which is being generous, may have noticed, we didn't play the, through Majors Season 2, and also may have noticed that Blood Bowl 3 is, 3 is out. So, we were going to start a Blood Bowl 3 League, but to be fair, it is good, but it is not finished. And... As Robbie pointed out in a conversation we had, the fact that we can't reconnect to a game when it drops means it's a bit unstable for a league. Yeah, especially without um, admin. I believe, don't believe it has admin tools at this point either. So it it's a risk. Yeah. Especially it, like it, we imagine getting to the finals and then something goes wrong and that's it. That would be very sad. Oh, I can't imagine watching a major final and then the game dropping out and the players having to figure it out. Anyway. Um... <laughs> I feel that's a reference, but I'll let's just roll with it. <laughs> it was, it was. It was a reference to the Andy Davo versus Purple Chest Chalice final on Blood Bowl 2, where it dropped oh, out. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. But anyway, so yes, we're not going to play Blood Bowl 3. We, I've enjoyed the game so far, but yeah, we're not going to play a league on it. As for what happened to Majors Season 2 with the random teams, we ha we got a bit burnt out at the time, so we put it on pause. The other thing is, is because it's been a while, we want to play with, well, most of us want to play with new teams, and we have a new member joining us, so we've decided just to start again, and maybe we'll re-look at a Majors Season next, or if we don't move to Blood Bowl 3 by that point. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, so, before I go over to the league, we have two teams that aren't in the league yet, but I know what their builds are. So I've remade them here, we're going to discuss them two first. You happy to do that, mate? Absolutely, let's get started. Cool, so this is Aaron, uh, he is our newest member. He likes dwarves, he doesn't know about the stereotypes surrounding dwarf players, so he is allowed to play them. Um... <laughs> I helped Aaron with this build. Uh, I did give him an option, so his actual build in the game might be slightly different, but it's going to be based on this. There'll only be one change, really. Um, so I advise him to uh, only take one runner, which I'll come to in a minute. He can only afford the one troll slayer. Uh, well, actually, he could go up to two. Or well, might give him the choice. Uh, two blitzers and long beards down to 11 and three rerolls. Now, I would love to play dwarves, but I'm going to hold on my dwarf playing until someone plays lizard men again. So, uh, I was te I was tempted, but maybe 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 Blood Bowl 3, maybe in the next one. Yeah, exactly. So, you played dwarves before, uh, Robbie. What do you think of this build as a starter? Yeah, I think that's you've got pretty much all your positionals, you got three rerolls which Considering m m pretty much every player's got block bar the runner, I think that's pretty solid. Yeah. I, yeah, I think maybe I would get pick up the second troll slayer. I qu I'm quite, I'm quite keen on them. Yeah, they're quite good. I, I think it was because I was doing it with um, Blood Bowl three maths and you couldn't quite fit it in. I can't. Yeah. Now. But uh, yes, I will say maybe get the second because it's either it's got the choice of a second troll slayer or a second runner. But I see a lot of. Um, well, I say a lot. Of, maybe pur may mainly purple chest advise only having one runner because it limits the amount of block that you don't have on the starting roster. So that's why I did it for Aaron. But... Yeah, typic typically one runner is it one runner is enough. Like as a dwarf player, you are very happy just to grind your way forward. And if you've only got to protect one player, that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, it make it a bit simpler for him to learn. Um, so, but he may not. He may choose he wants to be safer with his ball handling. He may choose the, the second runner and not the second troll slayer. I think his first purchase, if he does, I mean, his next purchase is a troll slayer. 
whether it's now or he upgrades. Um, yeah, absolutely. I don't think I'm going to advise him to take the Death Roller. That is up to him. Yeah, I think definitely like get your apothecary after this after this game, and yeah. work towards either a troll slayer or maybe a spare long beard or runner, and then you should be fairly com should be fairly comfortable from the from the way out unless something goes horribly wrong game one. Yeah, which it's dwarves, it probably won't. They'll be fine. Yeah, but you know it's happened to high elves before, so we will see. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Very true. Of course, uh, Ered is, like I said, he's played four games of Blood Bowl 7s, so uh, he, you never know. He, he'd probably get pretty good by the end, but I'm not expecting I'm not expecting Aaron to win the league, only based on the fact that he's newest, not because of the build. Yeah, I mean, definitely Dwarves are certainly a lot better in, uh, in 11s, I believe, due to yes. just having more bodies on the pitch. Yeah, they don't need to, they don't have a time, the time limit isn't as uh, short, no pun intended, so that they can take mm. their time to score and recover if someone scores against them. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So let's go back and we'll go on to Michael's Chaos Dwarves. Now, this is where we start seeing a bit of a theme for all of the team, well, not all, but a lot of the teams in this league. So, he has two Hobgoblins two bull centaurs, all of his blockers, and a minotaur. And only one reroll. <laughs> ah! This, this is what people like to call team value on pitch. He is, he is relying entirely on how good his players are and hoping his luck holds out. What, what do mm -hmm. you think? I... Yeah, I, it's a brave move, certainly coming in um, with this many positionals in a team that's not well known for its ball handling. Uh, it certainly could work. I I think I w if I was building this, I would probably forego the Minotaur and try and pick up some extra rerolls. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's a, quite a standard build. Like he would give you 110k. Yeah, you get at least another another reroll. I don't think you get two. Um, yeah, I think I think at least an extra reroll here. I don't think I'd maybe I would drop. Would I even drop a? I'd probably drop one blocker and the minotaur for two rerolls here. I just I don't one reroll just doesn't feel like enough. But again, I am also the kind of per I did consider only one reroll. With my own team, so maybe I'm, maybe I'm slightly, <laughs> slightly, slightly hypocritical. Nah, I don't know. I think oh yeah, in my get good series, I was playing uh, Chaos Dwarves, and I had the roster you were discussing first, no Minotaur, but with two rerolls, and I did all right. That was public matchmaking, so that was a little tough to start off with. Um, and there was a slight dicing in the last game. Which is why that is on pause. Uh, well, actually, quick side note. For this season, I will probably be recording my games for the Get Good series. But I don't know about anyone else's. Just because of time and now we're not in COVID anymore. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's like the other Dwarf roster. It's a lot of block and tackle. It's very scary to go up against. But I think he might run into trouble in his first few games until he gets another reroll. But he's got to earn mm. 160k to get there. Uh, no, sorry, yeah. uh, 120k. Mad maths. So yeah. Yeah. No, look, looking at the like standard builds on Fumble, yeah, most of these recommend at least like two. Like, there's no builds that go one reroll on yeah. the suggested builds. It's all like that. Yeah, there's one here. Five. Five hobgoblins, six dwarf blockers, and the minotaur is entirely going no bulls, but that gives you still gives you three re rerolls. That's pretty good. And there is, and there's also a variation if you could swap, yeah, uh, five five blockers, two bull centaurs, three re rerolls, yeah. which I assume the math still works out. Yeah. Between yeah, these, cause... between these old builds. Yeah, it should do. It should be the same. So, yeah. Oh, well, good luck to Mike. Literally. Yeah, I, I, if if he pulls this off, it's gonna be brutal. Yeah, but yeah, this actually works. 
Right, over to AAS Bowl. Uh, season 5. Oh! No, 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 that's the, that's the AI. So yeah, we're actually going to start at the end with the AI. Um, so we have nine coaches in the ten-man... So we need to do a ten-man round robin. That's also how this will be. Uh, so we'll all play each other once. There will be no finals or playoffs. We're just going to... Whoever wins, the uh, league wins. Um, this, I picked Ogres to be the AI team because... Originally, Robbie was thinking of playing Ogres, and so I just thought it'd be good to have an Ogre team in here, as we were all expecting it. Um, otherwise, it would have just been a random team. So yeah, it's a classic, four Ogres, four rerolls, lots of Noblars. Everyone, enjoy your XP farming when you get to this team. It should be good. Yeah, I'm... Yeah. I, I don't I was I was like scratching my head like that's not many ogres for but again like I guess like if you want another ogre you've got to ditch like two rerolls worth of stuff here yeah and like yeah. it's cheap yeah it's like do you want more ogres and more rerolls and I think I'd want more ogres because <laughs> just more strength five rather than strength one <laughs> <laughs> would you play the six ogres no rerolls build? Mm, absolutely. <laughs> so cool. So yeah, not much to say. Again, this will just be our almost buy round. So I'll start with mine. We'll go down the list. So I am playing undead. That looks like a very small line when it's like that. Um. So basically, in the Get Good series, I'm playing Blood Bowl three and just other games. I I've, I really am starting to like the Bash, uh, game. I just I am committing a lot of players, I am finding it hard to disengage, so I thought, for this season, let's lead into a proper bash team, and let's play Undead. So I've gone for the two of everything build, so two mummies, two ghouls, two whites, uh, oh sorry, only one skeleton and three zombies, that's just so all three can be on the line. Um, and yeah, and three rerolls, I think it's probably one of the standard builds, because I mean, the zombies and the skeletons can all be interchanged. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not well well versed with undead. Uh, let's have a look. So I th the main uh, weakness is their. Oh, sorry, I have three ghouls. I I lied. I have three ghouls, two whites. Um, so yeah, their weakness is their ghouls, because they don't have regen. Everyone else in the team does, and you don't have an apo. Like a ghoul on a human team, it would be amazing, but you just can't, you know, you yeah. can't get them. Absolutely. So, but on this team, they feel extremely vulnerable. <clears throat> the main, the main thing that's great is the mummies are a strength five mighty blow piece with no negatrait. trait. Like they just, yeah, they just that's solid. very good. Um, I played a big old season uh, on against the AI. With undead, I got to like seventeen hundred TV. So they're just very tough. They're very reliable. Everything has its use. Like the zombies get killed, the skeleton fouls. The whites are more of a utility piece, I think, than an actual blitzer. You go around, mm. you give them guard, and you go go around and put them in places they need to be. What's their access? Like, uh, what's a white? What's typically a white access? General and strength. Okay, yeah. So they are they they're taking on that kind of blitzer role, but you don't you yeah blitzer blocker guard yeah, kind of guy. Yeah, and they're also backup ball carriers with you know edge three. Oh, I guess that yeah, that's very important, and they're not slow either, which is quite good. No. So and then you got ghouls that sort of also become different things depending on how you level them so i'll probably have one be a ball carrier one be like a safety and a ball hawk with strip ball and wrestle and then i might have two ball carriers and one ball hawk and then yeah sounds safe yeah. sounds pretty safe yeah and then I'll, my first purchase will be another ghoul unless i have to replace anything obviously not replacing any zombies i would replace the skeleton if i had to yeah. Do you think you're going to go blodge on the ghouls? I think that's probably a fairly safe bet. I will probably go. The first one will get sure hands. The next one will get wrestle, and the third one will get block. 
but the short yeah. hands will also get blocked afterwards. Yeah, that makes sense. You, uh, you got. I guess that's the thing with the undead. You've got to pick up the ball. Yeah, looking on fumble. This is a st very standard, uh, like recommended starting build. Looks like yeah. you've got a bit of it, got all your positionals enough re rolls to make it work. Yeah, looks solid. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to playing an actual tier one team, and not just a, a glass cannon. Oh, I wish you the best, my dude. I Thank hope it works out. Much. I'm, I'm going to be sad when you resurrect my dead players. <laughs> yes, I mean that's the best bit. That's why anyone plays undead. I mean, I, I played, I played my brother-in-law in a test sevens game to show him Blood Bowl, and when he found out he could raise my dead players, it just it made him so happy. Yeah, I guess there's, some, there's something about it. Yeah. Okay, so now, Jay's team. You're not going to have Fumble to help you on this one. So he is apparently planning something very stupid. And okay. The, and I'm just going to trust and assume he Jay was the person who wanted to have a uh, a higher team value team to actually make this stupid thing. But apparently he will just it will look less powerful when he levels it up. So he has four Chaos Warriors, a Beastman, an Escaven Thrower, a Skaven Runner, a Dark Elf Assassin, which is, you know, not great, a Dark Elf Witch Elf, and two Underworld Goblins. Because it's apparently mm. themed around going to a strip club. So, <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure what he's planning. He does also, again, on theme, only have a reroll. Yeah, we're going very light on rerolls this this season. But it's going to be interesting. Uh, I, I mean, this is... Uh, what What is this? Is this like Underworld Denizens? This is, or... this is a mixed... No. Uh, this is mixed chaos uh, teams. Mm. Uh, it's one of the mixed ah. teams of Underworld team. Okay, so... Let's see. So four, I mean, four Chaos Warriors is just very solid, very good players. I like the, I like a Beastman potentially. Is that potentially a ball carrier? Well, uh, well, it's def it's a, it could be a flex player. Yeah. Because you know Beastmen do as they do. Good Skaven Thrower is solid. Gutter Runner is always going to get stomped, so he's probably not going to have that for long. But good to keep, good to definitely good to start with. Yeah, I mean. If you're playing against oh, that... this, you're aiming to attack the three strength two players. Absolutely. The I like the inclusion of assassin. I, I you know, I, I, I like an, a dark elf assassin. Yeah. I've never, never managed to make them work, but I appreciate them being there. Yep. Uh, um, just want to point out for you, Jay, if you're watching, uh, multi block does not work in Blood Bowl Two with stab, but frenzy does. So you can use frenzy with stab. You can. Fr I. I didn't even know that was possible. Full stop. Frenzy stab. That's great. Uh, yeah. Just to clarify, you make a normal block on the first, then you stab on the second. Hmm. I so, can yeah. see that. Nice. Yeah, because you have to push. But yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I think he's using the runners, the Skaven, basically, as his um, ball carriers. Mm hmm. And then. I guess goblins to just fill out. I'll be interested to see what he's trying to do. Yeah, I think it's definitely it could go multiple ways. I think it's gonna definitely depend on where the level ups go. Yeah. Yeah. Still, definitely interested to see. Exactly. Yeah, I think I'm thinking of it as like a slanesh team until I'm proven otherwise, which it kind of is. Fair enough. Right. Jason is playing Goblins again. Which, oh no. Which was like the first team we knew was confirmed. Um, I think this is a team build we've seen before. Two trolls, Ludi Fanatic, and that's it. Wow, he's not taking a bomber. No, I mean, I I can see why. Because get to actually get Hail Mary, need doubles. You've actually got to get XP on the thing. Yeah. I can see that. Uh, but yeah, that's a lot. That's, I don't know how many goblins you normally bring. It fe seems like a lot of goblins. I, think... I guess they don't normally stick around very long, so that's fair. I think he doesn't have a pogoer either. 
I mean, he could potentially pick them up in going forward. He's got he's got a fair bit of money in his back pocket, is which true. is kind of what you want in a goblin team because you want to at least try and get the bribes where you can. That is true. He could also upgrade his club um, if he wanted to. Sorry about that. Yeah, I think he could upgrade his club for 100k and it wouldn't increase his team value. If he wanted mm. to uh, make sure he always got his inducements. And then That's, very the... That's very true. Oh yeah, but you, what you don't want to do is get the one that gives you half price bribes because it doesn't work for the goblins. It just helps everyone else. Uh, is the one that gives free bribes, or is that, oh, no, or is that, that the that's same the one. one? That's the one, sorry, yeah. The club that gives you a free bribe, yeah. Obviously, don't go for that, just get, um, like, the one that reduces star player costs. If he wants to, he might not want to do the club. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess as goblins, you're always, you make sure your team, team value is always less than your opponent, so if he ever gets close to 150k, he just dumps money somewhere. Yeah, I think Fnatic, Mighty Blow and then get, get, you know, block or anything good later. Looney, dodge, and then hope for block. And same for the trolls. Like, I think unless the goblins get some get a double, I would maybe fire and rehire as needed. Yeah, I mean, like, get one guy with dirty gear, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fair, actually, yeah. Just get a, get a foul link piece. I mean, you could get two. Like, you could get as you know. many as you want. Just lots of sneaky gear. Lots of... <laughs> <laughs> lots of goblins just jumping on people. He just wants that bribe animation. But yeah, yeah. so again, we'll go, going back to like how things are going to go, Jace will hurt a lot of people. I don't know if he'll win many games, but it will hurt a lot of people getting there. Yeah, I think that's a win in any goblins book, really. Yes, it is. So, we now have Martin, who is playing Chaos. This was his team he picked for Blood Bowl 3, but has obviously just, just kept it. Uh, kept the choice for Blood Bowl 2. So, he has... Oh, yeah, sorry. I want to say, Martin, your motto needs to be Warp Factor 9 Mr. Block, okay? That's what your motto should be. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a, he has gone for the big guy build. So he's dropped in the, a team reroll to upgrade mm -hmm. a Chaos Warrior to a Minotaur. It is going to hurt. Uh, and he's probably going to do... He's probably going to struggle initially, but as his players level up and he gets sort of extra arm on the Beastman, he's going to do a lot better. Absolutely. Like, I think... I think per, I think I would have gone for the extra reroll because I'm a wimp, but I mean you're not. I think, yeah. You went for two yourself when we get to your team and and have uh, uh, gone for one in some others. So I don't know if you're a wimp about rerolls anymore. Yeah, no, I think yeah, I I can see I can see the angle. Like definitely having a big guy is certainly an advantage, and the minotaur is pretty decent. Frenzy mighty blow, particularly yeah, it's a very solid. I like wild animal. Yeah. Uh, what is whatever it's called? Is it untamed frosty now in the new game? Uh, yeah, in Blood Bowl three, it's unchanneled fury, but it's still wild animal fury. for now. Yeah. For so, us. Yeah. For us. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like it. It seems it's going to be a might be an uphill battle, but I think once he starts getting yeah, as he gets some level ups, this team will start specialising to whichever direction he wants to push it in. I remember, was it Ollie's team last time that ended up having like elf-like beastmen? Yes, it was, like... it was, yeah. He had like two adjups and passing abilities. And, yeah. I mean, good rolls. Good rolls on uh, Chaos could help a lot. He, of Absolutely. course, started with uh, just beastmen. Um, I also like Chaos, again, for the same reasons I've started to like Undead and Nurgle. Um, I like the commit. I like all the strength four. You know, I think it's just a question of positioning the strength four players where they can impact the most, especially on flanks and stuff. Absolutely. Yes. But yeah, no, I should say it's just, you know, chaos are the most solid, literal, literally um, 
tier 2 team. And I wish Martin the best of luck considering what happened to the vampires, the goblins and the orcs. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's his maybe this is his league yes talking of orcs the expender orcs uh <laughs> <laughs> emile's orc team seemingly based <laughs> that's a, a great fucking name uh it's based on oh yeah sorry if you do watch the bonus podcast i do swear um on yes action heroes so he has gone for my favorite orc build which is don't take alignment uh, so he's got two rerolls, all blitzers, all the black orcs, a goblin, a thrower, and a troll. Um, the the strength being that it's literally very strong, you know, four strength four and the strength five. You've got a goblin instead of an orc lineman because you basically it f it fulfills the um, role of something that needs to be punched, but gives you. The ability to be stunty bastard and go through tackle zones. That's why I like this build over the other orc builds. Yeah, it's a, it gives you the potent, if if you're in a rough situation, it gives you the potential for a one turn. Yeah, exactly. Which, I mean, I think that's pro. Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely a good option to have, like in your back pocket of like maybe it'll work. Uh, yeah, otherwise, solid. I like the orc blockers are very good. Good speed, decent strength, block, armor 9, just very high armor across the board. Yeah, he's he's kept, he's actually gone for the thrower. I know that's a contention um, uh, between orc players of to take it or to not take it. But I think the sure hands is too valuable, especially with only two rerolls. He How much getting... is a typical orc lineman? Uh, 50k. Oh, okay. So he so could, if he he could change the goblin to an orc lineman if he wanted. Yeah, I'm just uh, and drop and drop a cheerleader. Yeah. Or he could drop the thrower for a second goblin and go get an extra reroll. I think that vaguely uh, works out. 30 drop thirty, get two extra no. off the cheerleaders. No, he'd be ten k short. No, ten k short. Ah, fair enough. Uh. Yeah, I I like I like yeah I think I like the thrower. I like the option. I like the option. I like the sure hands. I treat it like a, you can easily treat it like a dwarf runner in that regard. And yeah, just pretty much. Cage up, push your way down the pitch with your high strength. Yeah. Because you, you, what you really want is a scrap as orcs anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I think that makes sense. Just hang on to, pick up the ball, hang on to it, and just have a scrap in the middle, and at some point make a break for. You know, at some point you might be near their line and you can walk it in. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we've got a lot of bash teams in this. Actually, we'll quickly do a count. So we know we've got two already. Three, kind of four, five, six, seven bash teams out of ten. Yeah, I'm glad. I, I, I was thinking of playing elves. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you may have won all the games. I don't. I don't. I don't think I'd get past the second <laughs> match with any players alive in this tournament. <laughs> so, talking of things that aren't alive, ha! Oh, segways are my speciality. Uh, the Bone Patrol, and I don't know what that is. Look at your uh, own peril. You no, know, don't worry. I think I think you'll figure it out on this next tab. Oh yes. So again, we only have one reroll. Uh, Robbie, there's a story to this. What what happened? Yeah. Uh, well, if you look how he's named his players, he didn't want to go through it again. <laughs> so what? I, I obviously, obviously get the first seven. What? Uh, it's it. Uh, I'm pretty sure the link is a Rick roll. Okay. <laughs> to a lie, cry desert. Fair enough. Um, so yes. Uh, Necromantic. Ha Ash has played Necromantic before. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he did pretty alright. So, what has he got? Two werewolves, one ghoul, two golems, two whites. So almost all the Ash three. And then both... Uh, sorry, and then four zombies. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously... God, he's only one away of another reroll. Hmm. I... Uh, Ash, I, I, I would, I would suggest just changing one, 
Just change the ghoul to a zombie, give it the same name, and take that reroll. Please. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's I think that's fairly solid. I think that's a I mean, maybe pick up and then maybe you can pick up a ghoul. Because I guess he, as an undead team, he's not he's not needing the immediate save for the apothecary as most people skimp on. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, Is also, it... he'd have all of his regen players. So, yeah, he really wouldn't need an apo at that point. Yeah, I think, yes. Maybe swap the ghoul for a zombie and, you know, you've got your two werewolves and two whites who can potentially handle the ball yeah. fairly comfortably. But we're looking at just... Basically, we want a lot of block on these first five. Yeah, players. especially especially the werewolves because they are just such an investment early on yeah. with armor eight. Yeah, you want blodge really on the werewolves. Don't yeah, you? they have good access, don't they? Yeah, they have. If general, I remember, general edge, I think. Maybe they have gas. Yes. Let's have a look. Uh, no, just general edge access. I mean, that's still that's still blodge very comfortably, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they've just. Yeah, two skills away, and obviously the ghoul can get bludged really easily. So yeah, but yeah. I mean, and the zombies, you just uh, maybe yeah. give what's one the kick. <laughs> yeah, is that what is that what is what's the standard thing to do with a zombie? I get because I my thing would just be I just have a load of them and I just use them to fill gaps. I think really, you have one with kick, you have one or two with dirty player, you give the rest to wrestle. Just so if people block them, you can take them to the ground and then annoy yeah, them. Yeah, that's sort an of upside, yeah. Turn, sort of, yeah, anti because you've only got two ghouls. So you need one to bull carry and one to uh, bull hawk. If you, you know, one is a safety with rest and tackle. Yeah. The other one needs block and sure hands. So with... with Wait, would, you, would you have werewolves as bull, bull hawks? Uh, you could. You could, but putting wrestle on something that's 120k as it starts that's cost, it's gonna get it yeah fouled. that's fair yeah that's that's fair i guess block first and may i mean i maybe grab strip ball but then again would i take strip ball over dodge on yeah. a on a, new, a player that is 140 at that point probably yeah. not i probably would just, get those two yeah maybe it's just such a high level thing we won't get there in, in like ladder and stuff, you block dodge, and then if you haven't rolled a double by your third sk skill up, you gen you generally uh, think about firing them and trying again with a werewolf because you really want mighty bow because claws some mighty yeah ah uh, and turn him into a killer yeah. yeah yeah so that is so he's really fishing for a double on his werewolves but I think yeah actually what you could do is have the werewolves as the ball carriers which is risky with his one reroll. And then just use the ghoul as a bullhawk. Yeah, I could I could see that, but yeah, I think the if he if he wants the extra, re I think I would definitely drop the ghoul for in for the opening game at least and get the extra reroll while they're cheap. Yeah, um, as yeah, and then guard and block block guard mighty blow on basically these four. Your choice in how you do it. Uh, maybe think block first on these two, mighty blow first on these two, and then guard the rest up after that. Yeah, I could definitely see that. I think, I think Ooh. I'd probably start. I think I'd probably start with guard on the whites first because I, I especially since a lot of the team is strength three, like it because yeah. I mean they may I I'd mostly use them there to help the zombies throw, throw throw blocks. But you could mix it oh, up. Oh, you could do oh, one werewolves, one. but yeah, yeah, one of each could do be good. Uh, also, doubles on zombies guard, because... Um, ah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, especially, guard feels especially good with werewolf with frenzy. Yeah, yeah, if you can sort of chain push around the werewolf, uh, around the zombie, sorry, or whatever you have with yeah. guard. And then, last but not least, is your team. So I think I'll just let you take the lead on this, if I open it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was originally thinking to grab all the positionals and just, you know, take what I can get. And then I realized I was one. I was only coming going one reroll, and I had four player, five players at that point with frenzy. And like, oh, that's not going to go so hot. So I've ummed and ahed about this, and this is what I've settled on. Yeah. So uh... I've gone two two of learners just just to because again, straight four is just uh, you can't I can't pass up on that. 
um, two berserkers, so I can get them leveling immediately. Um, that, that nice aggressive piece. Uh, two runners, because I need the speed. And again, I want them leveling fairly quickly. Uh, and I was trying to angle for a thrower, but I re realized that I wouldn't be able to get an extra... I, I realized I couldn't be able to get an extra reroll, but I could pick up an apothecary. So I'm going to start off with an apothecary immediately. Yeah. Um, because I couldn't get the... I could, I'd could. i have to drop like a further positional here to get the third reroll, and I just thought it wasn't worth that. wasn't quite worth. Yeah, so I think... Yeah, I think, and then get the thrower next, because it gives you that angle, uh, if you want yeah. to. I don't, I, I don't recommend throwing, but there's always, there's always times where you need to. Um, yeah, and also I can pick it up for, hopefully, if I can get the thrower, punch him with him a little bit, get leader. Yeah. Gets me that extra reroll. Exactly, that was the other thing, yeah. And then go for the Yeti at the end. Because um, the nice thing is, because you've got the Apo that can save all your um, your important pieces uh, the lineman dying and being journeyman isn't really an issue because they're just you know they've got block they can sit on the line and they'll do their job and they'll just be yeah, fine exactly um, yeah that, that's my, that's my angle yeah what are you thinking for your level ups if you wish to divulge uh, I haven't really thought too much about it, really. I, I haven't really done much with Norse before. Uh, but, and because everyone's got block, that takes that just, oh, easy level up. I'll just give them block uh, off the table. So let's see. What would I do? Um, for a general lineman, uh, maybe tackle. We don't really have particularly dodgy teams. No, only really uh, the two stunty teams. Yeah, I'm not really too worried about them right now. Yeah. So maybe that, maybe strip ball. Um, someone will get kick, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, currently I'm thinking just uh, I might do pr maybe pro. I like I like the idea. I like the idea of pro. Might be quite useful. Yeah, if you're low on rerolls, could help. <laughs> yeah, I think that just I think honestly having pro in a lot of scenarios might be quite good. So I might pick up pro on the players with that. So runners, if if I actually if my thrower, if I actually pick up the thrower, I'll think about catch. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I'll start with dodge. Probably probably start with dodge. Keep just to keep them active and moving. Yeah, obviously two blodgers for 110k would be good. Yeah, basically pretty much just Each. knock yeah. off walk dancers, war dancers at that point. Now <laughs> that sounds good to me. Um, berserkers? Hmm, not too sure. Hmm. What? Well, because they guards would be nice on a double for a lineman. That would be lovely. True. Um, actually, but... yeah, guard could be good on the berserkers as your pieces, as your strength access pieces. Um, yeah. Mighty blow's good because but... you've got um frenzy, so you've got twice as many chances to knock people down. That's true. I think maybe, yeah. I think that. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. I definitely think I'm getting block on the awful one is next. Yeah. Just so they can, just so they don't get punched down. An alternate then it, then... option for the awful one and going back to the werewolves would be to get a juggernaut and use it so you can keep mm. pushing for surfs. That's true. Uh, access to frenzy should hopefully mean I can surf a bit more. Certainly, against the my practice game against the AI, I managed to surf them off. But yeah. I guess they they were they they should have been, you know, an actual player will be much more aware about being that far out on the wings. Yeah. Yeah. Still, you are, yeah, the glass hammer team of this tournament, I think. But all that block yeah. is going to be quite hard for anyone else except Aaron to counter. Yes, yes. I'm glad I did. I was also debating to take Amazons, and considering we've got two dwarf teams, I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, nah. No, but... I, I think you made the right choice. Yeah. So well, we shall see. We shall see how this goes. I, it's, I've not really played much with uh, Frenzy in the past, so this should be interesting. You, you will learn fast. That's what I did with corn. <laughs> uh, I think I learned the most with my corn against your Kislev team. Mm, good match. Yeah, it was. 
So yeah, that is our opening for AAS Season 5. I was just thinking now, as you were chatting actually, we could do a mid-season uh, roundup and an end-of-season roundup as well. I think it would be pretty good. So once, yeah, we're down, once we're at round 5, we'll see how everyone's doing and then we'll round up at the end. Yeah, sounds good to me. Good, yeah. Uh, oh, just so everyone also knows, uh, two weeks. You've got two weeks to play your games. If you haven't played by two weeks, your game will be set to a draw and the round will end. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, it's round robin. It will be three minute team, uh, turns. And I can't think of anything else. So I think that is where we will leave it. So I'll thank you for joining me, Robbie. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and we will see you all next time. Bye-bye.